Ugh, is that a spider? Oh no, that's a rubber band. I have so many spiders in my office. I just killed one on my fabric stand. Hey team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up and a very special welcome to all the new people here, um, to everybody that found me after my flat earth debate and the even more of you that found me after I showed up on Fight the Flat Earth which was also after I recorded this video. I'm super happy you guys are here, and I'm also a little overwhelmed by all the love, but you're great. Over on Modern Day Debate, um, I'm so glad that you guys are here. So we've been talking about um, climate dynamics and climate feedbacks for the last several weeks here on the channel. And today we're gonna talk about cloud feedbacks. Let me start today off by telling you guys that clouds are so complicated. I know, we all learned about them in elementary school and they were like, here's a cumulonimbus cloud. Cumulonimbus, I can pronounce that correctly. And here's a stratus cloud and that's what clouds are. And I am here to tell you, good people of the internet, that you have been lied to and clouds are so much more complicated and, and, and cloud physics, cloud physics is its own subfield of meteorology. We're here to talk about clouds and climate, and we're gonna try to do that as simply as possible. So let's start by channeling our best Bob Ross and draw a happy little cloud. Happy cloud. What is this cloud gonna do with incoming solar radiation? So we have our sun over here, we have our sunlight coming in. It's gonna hit the top of the cloud. Clouds, like ice, are very shiny. This is white, right? White, light-colored things tend to reflect light away. Black and dark-colored things tend to absorb that light. So the way the cloud top is going to interact with this incoming shortwave solar radiation is it's gonna try to reflect it back to space. So that means the cloud top tends to be cool. Okay, great, awesome. Now we've got to talk about the cloud base. So the cloud base, that's the ground, cloud, cloud base, ground. So for the sunlight, that doesn't hit the cloud top, makes it down to the surface, is absorbed and re-emitted by the Earth as this upcoming long wave radiation, outgoing long wave radiation. Now we've got to take into account the fact that this cloud is made of water. And like we talked about in the last video, water is a greenhouse gas. So the water is going to tend to absorb and re-emit this radiation back to the surface. So the cloud base tends to be warm. So clouds, again, the top of the cloud tends to lead to cooling. The base of the cloud tends to lead to warming. So when we're talking about how will clouds affect overall climate change, how are they gonna to react to a warming Earth? We've got to remember that we're actually dealing with two different processes. As always, with our feedback loops, we're gonna start with surface temperature, and then we're gonna see how surface temperature affects evaporation. Evaporation is going to affect water vapor content, and water vapor content then affects clouds. After the clouds is where we're gonna split this into two parts, the cloud top and the cloud base. That's going to be trapped heat for the cloud base and reflected sunlight for the cloud top. Okay, drawings got away from me a little bit, but we're gonna, it's great, it's gonna be great. So, as always, let's start our loop by looking at what happens when we raise surface temperature. Warmer surface temperature is gonna make evaporation easier. So we'll put a little up arrow there and we know we'll have that positive 
connection between this term and that term. More evaporation means more water vapor in the atmosphere. Again, we've got our nice up arrow and a positive connection. More water vapor is gonna mean more clouds. Pause, because if this was written, I would want a big ol' asterisk right here to be like, hey, hey, go look at the footnote. There's more information that you need to have here. This is a grossly oversimplified relationship. It's gonna work for our purposes, but I would be remiss if I didn't point out that the effect on clouds from an increase in surface temperature is a very active area of research. So it looks like global warming increasing surface temperature may have sort of more of an effect on cloud distribution. Where do we see the most clouds on planet Earth from a global perspective? Um, average cloud height uh, and, and even cloud type. So those um, are going to be things that are all changing with a changing climate. And again, that's a very active area of research. But for you and me, just trying to understand this relationship, this is an okay approximation. So this is sort of an okay simplification for what we are trying to understand. Um, but if you want to read more about this, I've got a link in the description to the um, IPCC report um, and, its, uh, and, the, and the appropriate chapter. There's a whole section on clouds. IPCC is the International Panel on Climate Change. It's, it's an organization through the UN. Anywho, out of the footnote, more clouds, increased cloud cover, whatever you want to think about it is, will both increase the trapped heat and the reflected sunlight. So both of these guys go up. So we've got a positive connection here and a positive connection there. More trapped heat would mean warmer surface temperature, but more reflected sunlight would mean cooler surface temperature. So then the question becomes, which of these two effects dominates? Well, the good news is, is net cloud radiative forcing is in fact a thing that we can measure with satellites. So net cloud radiative forcing is basically the, the sum of these two terms from what you can measure in a satellite. It's a very simplified perspective, but hopefully you get, you get the idea. So if we add these two effects up right now, it's the reflected sunlight term that dominates. So that means overall, right now, this is actually a negative feedback loop that the effect of clouds on the overall climate is to reduce the effects of climate change. The caveats to that, and notice I said right now, and I emphasize that like five times, because that's absolutely something that's subject to change. That's part of that very active area of research. And also, it's not, my reflected sunlight term isn't winning by a whole lot. So again, right now, there's a smallish cooling effect from the cloud feedback but that's subject to change and it's not nearly as big an impact as say ice albedo effect or some of our other climate effects. Okay team, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you are well, whether you are an old timer, been here for half a minute or one of my new subscribers. Again, thank you all so much for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, be kind, and I'll see you all next time. Bye team.